$143 billion. That's how much money Americans gave to churches in 2022, according to research group Giving USA. It's more cash than what was donated to education and human services combined. But how is the money spent by church leaders? And what happens to the dollars you put in the offering plate? Multiple people have spoken with the News 12 Investigates team asking these questions and raising these concerns about a new mega mansion with ties to a church in Greenville. In the sprawling Star Hill Farm neighborhood off Dickinson Avenue in Greenville, where business owners, doctors, and even the ECU chancellor live, Construction crews spent more than two years building the now largest house in the city, totaling 13,683 square feet. 13,000 square feet? That's a small castle. This is 3603 Star Hill Farm Road. According to Pitt County tax records, the single family estate on 1.6 acres has a current market value of more than $1.6 million. It's not owned by a person, but by a prominent church in Greenville. County records show it is property of Koinonia Christian Center Church Ministries Incorporated. Bishop Rosie O'Neill is the registered agent for the nonprofit, according to the North Carolina Secretary of State's office. Unfortunately, we found dozens, if not hundreds of houses worth more than a million dollars owned by churches. And I think it's shameful. It's a disgrace to the Church of God. Pete Evans is the president of the Trinity Foundation, a watchdog ministry to expose abuse of public trust and religious organizations. It just was too much to stomach to see the lavish lifestyle of the prosperity gospels. The Koinonia Christian Center website shows Bishop Rosie O'Neill founded the church in 1989 and it now has more than 2,500 members. Her biography states she oversees 22 churches in the Koinonia Fellowship of Churches and Ministries, both in the United States and internationally. So, since December of 2023, we called the main campus on Greenville Boulevard multiple times and sent nearly a half a dozen emails. Trying to get in touch with Bishop O'Neill, we asked for a copy of the nonprofit's financial records and good faith transparency to the donors. And the reason why churches are treated special is because of really a uh, separation of church and state. Reginald Mombrun is a tax law professor and former IRS assistant branch chief. He says churches are encouraged to voluntarily comply with the IRS. Religious organizations meeting requirements under the IRC Section 501c3 are automatically considered tax exempt and receive other favorable treatment. For a church to be investigated by the IRS, it has come from a very high position at, at the IRS. Although not required by law, church leaders may apply and maintain a tax-exempt status by submitting a filing every year. This ensures any donations are tax-deductible for church members, but the filing is not open to the public. The IRS is asleep at the wheel. They're, they should be looking more closely at these churches the IRS even allows pastors to subtract their housing cost, including mortgage payments and utilities, from their income, too. A, a pastor or a deacon is accused of, of a crime. The whole church uh, state thing just, just, just goes away. The government is not going to uh, respect that. This is basically like the Wild West here in America now. Pastors can do almost anything as long as they run it through their lawyers and put the wording right in their articles of incorporation. For months, we did not hear back from Bishop O'Neill or her team. So we decided to visit the church to ask our questions in person. We're looking into 3603 Star Hill Farm Road. Are you, are you familiar I don't with know. I'm just a receptionist. Since Bishop O'Neill was not there, we went to the house. When we arrived, a church van was parked outside and two people appeared behind the gate. I'm Tyler from News 12. I'm looking for Bishop Rosie O'Neill. She's not here right now. The lady would not identify herself. Curious about what this property was used for. I know it's in the church's name. It's just a home. Is this her residence? It's, it's our home. A home with six bedrooms, nine bathrooms, elevator, pool, and gazebo per county records. What message this sends to the community and the congregation and if they were aware of this facility here, this oh, home? Our congregation knows about our, uh, her new place. So. 
Within minutes of leaving the neighborhood, a response to our many emails stating they're declining any interviews or questions. There's nothing illegal, immoral, but not illegal. The pastor's focus should be on the most needy person in the congregation, not on themselves, not on their lavish lifestyle. Pete is calling on the IRS to create a simple form for churches to be easily more transparent and accountable for each dollar and cent. He says it's up to you and fellow parishioners to ask for a copy of your church's finances to ensure the money moving through the church falls in line with the mission. You can read a tax guide for churches and see our previous in-depth stories by just scanning this QR code here on your screen, or you can also click on the News 12 Investigates tab on our website. If you have something you want the News 12 Investigates team to look into, call, text, or email us as we hold the powerful accountable.